I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This video is one in a like an hour long playlist where Ryan Harrell and I look at his look at his cute grin. Oh my goodness, he's so adorable. This is <laughs> he and I are talking about every single BL Heli 32 option. In this one, we are discussing PWM frequency. If you're here to learn about PWM frequency, go for it. If you want to learn about all the other BL Heli options, check the playlist down in the video description. And if it feels like this video doesn't exactly stand on its own, that's why. We had like an hour long conversation then I've broken it out into individual sections because almost nobody is gonna watch an hour long video about BLHeli 32. Hmm. All right, here we go. Rather than go in a random order, I think we should, I wanna start with the stuff that most people are gonna care the sure. most about. I would argue that PWM frequency is a good place to start. Sure, we can start there. Tell us about PWM frequency. So, um, this is one that can cause a bit of confusion because some people, when they think PWM, they're thinking the input signal, um, especially, you know, back in the day we were doing, you know, one shot, multi shot, all of that were, were derivatives of what they call centerline PWM um, or um, technically it's pulse position modulation, but it's all people called it PWM. So um, what what's happening now is we're talking about with PWM frequency communication between the microcontroller that's powering the ESC that's driving the ESC and the FETs or the gate drivers themselves. So it's basically controlling how often it's sending updates to the FETs. So when we're talking about PWM, we have two things that we're talking about. We're talking about duty cycle and frequency. Mm -hmm. So duty cycle tells us what percentage of the time the FET is turned on mm -hmm. and frequency tells us how often it's updating that. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's basically the period that the length of time that it's that it's using to calculate the percentage and then duty cycle being the percentage. So the PWM frequency here is telling you how fast it's sending updates to the how, how fast and how often the ESC is basically driving the motor. And the default PWM frequency in Beale Heli suite is 24 kilohertz, mm -hmm. but I'm running at 48 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. And I do that for all of my quads. I mm -hmm. start at 48K. I've found that 48K can solve mid-throttle oscillations. Mm -hmm. yep. The first thing I do if you're having mid-throttle oscillations is I say start at 48K and then work your way down in steps from 48 to 24. It's not always the case that higher is better. Right. Higher also often gives smoother motors at higher throttle. Mm -hmm. But we were talking about some – so as a, as a rough guideline, I would say – on every build you do, set the set the PWM frequency to 48k, mm -hmm. and then if, see how that flies. If yeah. you really want to dig into it, you can experiment. And you'll hear an audible difference when you're driving it at higher frequencies. The whole motor will sound a little bit smoother. It will sound a little bit softer sounding when mm -hmm. it's when it's running. What are some reasons not to just set it to? Why do they default to 24 instead sure. of 48 then? So. Um, the older ESCs, the the BL Heli 16, um, were often running at 16 kilohertz. That was kind of the the midpoint that they were running at. Um, the problem is you run into is that that's within the standard. Also, in in terms of when ESCs are driving the motor, every time it pushes the uh, you know pushes the motor around one, mm -hmm. it's called a commu commutation. So each time it's driving one phase to the next phase, that's called a commutation. Mm -hmm. So what what happens is when your commutation frequency is kind of aligning with the PWM update frequency, that's when you get oddness around mid-throttle oscillations. There's so a, it's, there's it's an actually aliasing it's problem, an, right? It's an aliasing around that that issue. So by moving it to higher frequency, you're moving that to a higher RPM range, yeah. which typically has less trouble with it because it's happening quicker, and often it will actually move it outside of the range at which the ESC is operating. So that's why 48 kilohertz is pretty much the least likely chance for that to happen unless you're running super tiny motors. Um, you know, but what kind of what kind of problems? What kind of problems could you run into it, if you set it at 48K? Why might you sure. not want to do that? So there's there's a known issue with driving at higher PWM frequencies when you're dealing with um, brushless motors, and that has to do with low-end torque. Um, because you're you're updating more frequently, it, it, it changes the relationship between how much current is passing through at very, very low um, duty cycles. Um, because you're updating so frequently so frequently and the duty cycle is so low, um, it can actually reduce the, the spinning torque at very low um, RPMs. Okay. So your low end might feel a little bit softer. Um, okay. You might, it might 
um, you might notice that you have to use a little bit higher throttle at very low throttle to maintain a certain cruising point. Um, for instance, if you if you're used to cruising at a certain throttle percentage on BLHeli S, mm -hmm. you may find that when you switch to BLHeli 32, you're using a little bit higher throttle percentage to cruise at a slow speed um, for the same speed. Now that that difference dissipates as you move higher in the throttle because um, the duty cycle is taking up more of the percentage of the right. drive cycle and and even at higher frequencies it's still pushing and then obviously at um, at full throttle the the fets are essentially open the entire right the entire um, frequency so it doesn't it doesn't really matter at all at full throttle so so I my my philosophy has been that a higher PWM frequency usually solves more problems than it causes. Yeah. And I, the other thing I've heard is that on some of the early BLA32 ESCs, the processor were like wasn't running fast enough, and the higher PWM frequency would cause an issue. Right. They couldn't I, actually drive it at much higher. Than, I don't than think that, that's yeah. really an issue today. No. Right. So I would say, as a shorthand, just mm -hmm. go to forty-eight K, especially if you're having mid-throttle oscillation mm -hmm. issues. Change that around. Sure. Okay. Um, one of one other thing relating to the PWM frequency um, has to do with the resolution of the timers on the processor itself. Okay. So it's not just the speed of the processor; it has to do with how much resolution the PWM, the hardware PWM drivers, can actually output. So it has to do with the number of steps of resolution that you're capable of driving it at. So sometimes at um, different PWM frequencies, you may have a different effective resolution. Hmm. Um, you know, some may be 10, 24 steps, um, depending on, so as you go up in, in frequency. You may, you may lose a tiny bit of throttle resolution. Right. Maybe, but if you went from a difference of 10, 24 steps to a difference of, say, 5, 12 steps. Right. Are de debatable whether that's um, or twenty forty eight to twenty forty eight to twenty four. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, depending on how that that um, timer is provisioned, you could you could lose some resolution there um, depending okay. on what you select. But um, that's probably right. not going to be dramatically noticeable. Um, the only point would be that D shot has a certain resolution, and then the PWM driver output has a certain resolution. So even if D shot has a high resolution, you may not be experiencing the full resolution of D shot. Uh, at, at because the PWM frequency is is basically yeah. nullifying. I espe I especially think this is useful for freestyle pilots who want smoothness at high throttle. Mm -hmm. And again, to solve them. this is one of the biggest reasons I people ask: Should I go to BL Heli Thirty Two or I can get an eight dollar race day quads <laughs> BL Heli SESC or a Zylo? Get, Lumineer has or get FPV has a mm -hmm. Zylo. Mm -hmm. It's like eight bucks is BL Heli S, and this is one of the biggest reasons I think people should go to BL Heli Thirty Two because BL Heli S doesn't give you the option to adjust this parameter, and it can solve some pretty. It's really hard to solve mid throttle oscillations with PID tuning or filtering. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this really clears it up. Okay, let's move on, and that is going to bring us to the end of this video. But of course, there's a whole lot of other BL Heli Thirty Two options, and Ryan and I will be covering every single one of them. Look down in the video description. There's a link to a playlist. And if some of those videos are private, it just means they haven't come out yet. There's like an hour of content here. So come back to the channel and eventually all of them will be released. And then you can uh, learn everything you want to know about BLLA32. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.